U202-20. Brown thread, 70 denier, denier, whatever. Scissors, yeah. I used to have scissors, <coughs> I don't have any more. Scissors. Brown and Grizzly, large. Keog Hackle Pack. Grab about six Hackle. They can secure that. You want about the hook gap length of a, a tail coming out the back of this fly. So, well, that's where I'm going to start with it. Hook gap, roughly. Anyway, catch it. A couple turns. Not tight. That looks about right. Because it's going to go down the hook bend. I'm going to take it down the hook bend. One time. One time. Get out of there. Don't know. <clears throat> then you take some uh, small copper wire. Extra small copper wire. Lay it in there. Catch that. Just grab every, grab all the material together and secure it to the hook as you as you go towards the hook bend. You, you want to make sure that it's laying on the back the back of the hook and not wrapping around it. That creates a problem. Go all the way down the hook bend. <clears throat> At this point, you could trim off all this excess junk on the top. I'm gonna take some brown. This is. I've had this dubbing for 25 years, and I still haven't used it all, so it's a old school stuff. It came in a fly tying pack that I bought, a fly tying kit. I don't think they even make it anymore. Anyway, grab a little bit. <clears throat> you want to go sparse with your dubbing. You always want to put dubbing on a little at a time. It's easier to take it up, uh, to add it than it is to take it out because it fibers intermingle. Spin the dubbing up onto the I start on the back side and I spin the dubbing all the way up to the hook. All right? And then as as I'm spinning, bringing the thread around, I spin the dubbing in, in my forefinger and thumb to create a tight wrap. So that's the first one. And I get it caught. Now I can spin it. I can continue to spin it. This is the way Rim Chung makes his, his, his segmented body for his RS2. It's a pretty cool technique. <clears throat> a little bit more. You want to taper, taper the body from nothing to something, really tight at the tail to thick at the thorax. So continue to spin and go forward. Moving forward to the eye, making sure the body is getting a little thicker. It's okay to back it off a little bit if you end up with a big bump or something. When you get it up to the thorax, it's okay if it gets a little bit more bulky that you're going to kind of cover it up a little bit anyway. So. At this point, I'm I'm pretty much done with this color of brown. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the I'm going to bring the copper wire. It doesn't matter which direction. I'm going to bring wrap it forward, starting right at the tail, and I'm trying to make even segments as I come forward. All mayflies have 11 segments in their body. You'll never get that. So just try and get it so that there's some break. It breaks up a little bit. So bring it forward. Get to the top, bring it around. Some guys helicopter the wire, I just cut it off, I've always done it. Take take my the finger side of the of your scissors and run it right across the, that sharp edge. 
Now I'm going to take some Antron yarn, gray Antron yarn. I got this 20 years ago too. And I still haven't used it all. I'm going to cut off a segment of that. I have I have the thickness. This is half of the of the normal thickness, so just know that going in. And I take and I catch I, I catch the wire or the, the the thread in between it. And then it's, it makes it easier to connect it to the to the hook. So at this point, and it also works as it, it makes a nice separation for if you're going to do a post wing. You can see how it would make a nice separation for a post wing. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bunch it all together and comb it through. So, so now that I've caught it here, I'm going to secure it in place. Now I'm going to change the color of my thorax <clears throat> just because it... All these bugs aren't the same color all the way through and through. There's some difference. There's some there's some air trapped between the exoskeletal shell and, and its body. So going with a, a lighter colored thorax or a darker colored thorax sets the fly off a little bit. makes it look a little bit more realistic in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin on another colored dubbing, which is a trilo trilobal dub fiery brown. It's kind of a metallic colored, copper colored thing. One wrap behind to get it to stand, and then catch the mess again, and then go again behind it, and then take and spin it in front of it. I'm kind of done with, that's pretty simple. Oops, it does happen on occasion. So, that's no big deal, you can go ahead and just reconnect. And at this point, take a couple of finishing wraps towards the front. Now I like these with a black head, so I take a sharpie to change the thread, thread color. And my old school whip finish. That's what I learned on, that's why I use it. Some of you don't. You got other kinds of whip finishes. A couple of times at first to catch it, knot it up. And then go ahead and build that little black head. Keep the head small as the head on the critters truly small break it off and cut it and then take your wings and you want to go the hook gap so I use my scissors as a guide I'll go up I'll, I'll grab the tip all right and I'll go right up to the bottom of the hook gap like this if you get from the bottom of the body to the hook gap which is about that much and I'll go up here and I'll go to the top of the thing to the tip grab it cut and there you have Steve's Chaco Emerger got a couple crazy legs coming off that's okay kind of makes them look makes them look like legs that's it that's a done deal right there let me get a little closer for you that's it right there Good little bug. Cut a bunch of fish on it, that's for sure. I've seen him up close and personal. Anyway, that's it.